Dorothy was a determined and very courageous woman, a woman who loved the poor. She always spoke like this, we will come together and love one another. This phrase stayed with us, it has stayed in my heart, thank you. Dorothy was aware of the danger she was in, but she never stopped. She didn't deserve to die that way. She had never hurt anyone and she died, killed in that way, without ever hurting anybody. It's so sad. I cried so many tears, we cried a lot. Dorothy is still present in our lives. She left a huge vacuum, but she also left great strength. Sister Dorothy Maystang was born in 1931 in the state of Ohio in the USA. She grew up in a family of nine children. In 1948, she joined the Congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Namur, where she was a schoolteacher. In 1966, the community sent her to live in Amazonia, in Brazil. She would stay there for eight years in the state of Maranao, before going to the state of Para. She finished by settling in the region of Shingu, a tributary of the Amazon. She assisted the poor peasant farmers in upholding their rights against the domination of the major landowners, who often occupy the land illegally. She was supported in this task by the sisters of the congregation and her bishop. Dom Erwin Krautler of Austrian origin had been living in Amazonia since 1962. He was Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Xingu, the largest diocese in Brazil with a land area larger than Italy. In October 1987, Dom Erwin narrowly escaped an assassination attempt that cost the life of the priest who was accompanying him. Despite constant death threats, he tirelessly defended the cause of the indigenous populations. In 1982, a sister arrived at the prelature where we were working and she introduced herself. I asked her, what are your plans? Where do you want to work? She replied she wanted to work with the poorest of the poor. I replied, you do not know what you're saying, because we don't talk about poverty here. The issue here is not poverty, it is misery. So you want to work out there on the road that crosses Amazonia, in the Anapu district. I warn you, you will not be able to bear it. You will not be able to bear it because it is infested with malaria. Sometimes you will endure hunger and there is no transportation, etc. She replied, at least let me try. I thought that she would go there, have a look, and realize that it was not for her, because she was used to a life of comfort. She came from the United States, and so she was going to come back and maybe make some trips back and forth. What actually happened was she stayed until the day she was killed. 
She had the willpower to take on this mission right to the very end. I admire her a lot for that. The area that I have the rich opportunity to live in is along this huge road that was put through the Amazon forest, east to west, and it's parallel to the Amazon River. But the Indian, they went right through a big indigenous area. So in order to uh, bring the work crew through, they came th across with small airplanes, bringing um, trinkets, food, clothing, and drop these right close to the area where the road should go through. And the Indians would, after the plane would go across, they would come to see what that was. And they saw it were nice things because they're like little children. They live in the forest. They've never seen something like this before. They've never seen that kind of food, that kind of clothing. They didn't even know what to do with a lot of it. And then one day when the people were very, very happy when they would hear the airplane come, they ran and here came a bomb. And the bomb exploded and many of the people were killed, and the rest of them moved their villages fast, way, way off the roadbed. And so the, the road has gone through. The Indians were the first inhabitants of this land. They have been living in Amazonia for at least 12,000 years. Everyone else arrived from elsewhere. The Indians are the indigenous population. However, in the old constitutions, the Indians had been forgotten. That is, they didn't even have the right to exist and were required to renounce their own identity. The constitution of 1988 made a change to this. I refer to this as a Copernican revolution because we, and they of course, truly succeeded in reversing the situation. Now Indians have the right to their culture, to their way of life, their ancestral lands, and their forms of expression, and they must be respected in their indigenous practices. For me, this was a great victory, the importance of which it is difficult to imagine, because it changed everything. And yet, the actual application of this law in reality is still lacking. There are difficulties in implementing it. Many of the people cut down the trees because the only thing they, <coughs> the only thing they know is survival farming, at slash and burn. But they, what they do is very limited in relation to these big farmers, we call them ranchers, who see it as a way to have cheap cattle grass. They can cut down thousands of hectares of this and burn it off. Thanks to evaporation, an Amazonian tree is capable of releasing about 1,000 liters of water in a single day. The total quantity of water released by the forest of the Amazon Basin is about 20 billion tons per day. The evaporated water in the form of clouds is driven by the prevailing wind and stopped by the Andes. This provides the water supply for a large section of the region. The Amazon forest alongside the Congo is one of the lungs of the earth. It absorbs an enormous amount of carbon dioxide which partly makes up for the carbon emissions caused by human activities. Deforestation to this extent unsettles a delicate balance. Brazil has about 30% of the world's biodiversity. And so can you imagine when somebody chops down a tremendous area that burns for 10 days and we've lost forever all that biodiversity that took thousands of years for all of this, this plant life to, to originate and to develop. And we've lost in one fire. It's gone forever.
On the 24th of September 1999, the government of Brazil, in association with the National Institute for Colonization and Agrarian Reform, decided to set up a scheme for the equitable distribution of land and sustainable development, called PDS. The restrictive agreement, which every landowner must sign, reserves 20% of the land area for agriculture and 80% for the forest, which is to remain as common land. Dorothy saw this as a unique opportunity for the local population that did not own any land. With them, she devoted her attention to setting up the PDS Esperanza. Currently, 150 families have joined forces behind the same objective, balancing agriculture with respect to the environment. Cocoa production forms an essential part of their revenues. The Boa Esperanza community meets regularly on Saturdays to relax and to celebrate together. The evening begins with a time of thanksgiving. They express their gratitude to the Lord Jesus and his servant Dorothy, without whom they could never have lived in this space. Today, the children have prepared objects on the topic of recycling. I came from the state of Espírito Santo, full of illusions. Great promises had been made by the state, good land for everyone a land where milk and honey flow. When we arrived, we saw nothing like that. We were abandoned right in the middle of the forest. And as we didn't know very much about nature's rules, everything seemed hostile. The animals, the forest, it was very difficult. Four years later, we were still in this mess and wanted to go home. That's when Dorothy arrived. With her gentleness, her simplicity and her friendship, she won us over and brought us the good news. She began to make us understand that we had everything we needed in order to transform this Amazon into a pleasant place to live. So I began to understand the importance of nature in our lives, even though, as I said, everything seemed hostile to me. She brought the light of education for our children, who little by little found good conditions to study with dignity and respect. Many primary schools have been opened. The San Antonio School is the first school for young and old to attend secondary level education. This was one of Dorothy's dreams that has recently been fulfilled. She had a light all of her own which drew the attention of everyone of any age, children, young people, adults and older people. She had a special way of approaching each person.
The gospel messages that I live by that provoke me, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, strikes me very much to work so that we live in a sharing world, that we love each other, and we love each other in a caring way, so that everybody, can, in a very democratic way, can share in these world's gifts. If they've been invented, why should only a few share in them? Why can't more people share in the uh, marvelous creativity that has come to our planet? A gente entrou para cá, foi assentado em 2004. We came to live on this land in 2004, and we are still here today. So we have been here more than 10 years, and they have been 10 happy years. It is good here. I love this place. But as I have just said, what we lack is Dorothy, who is no longer with us. The person who does good is persecuted. The person who defends the weak is persecuted. Quando já sabia a história dela, como ela vinha, de onde ela vinha, dentro da infância dela, que ela tinha aquele aquele dom we knew her story, the gift that she had since her childhood, this desire to help in the struggle against poverty. Then, when we started living close to her, it was a life of brotherhood, as if we were a family. She helped us, and we did what we could in this struggle to put land into other hands. She never took land from anyone to give it to us. She went after public land, land that was free. Sister Dorothy never touched land that belonged to others. And so I think we have to change up a lot of our living patterns so that we can have a more, a healthier world, a healthier planet. We have to learn to have the necessary things of life and not ask ourselves, what do we want? But what do I need? With this long-term vision, she was always meeting with us. She would discuss, explain, make calculations of what we would do and what we would plant. Many things that she planned in earlier years are now coming to fruition because we are building schools, a health centre and a road which, while not very good, does allow us to get around with all different sizes of vehicles. When I go into this forest, I feel good. I like going for a walk here, and I ask Jesus to forgive those people who seek to destroy it. We ask him so persistently that he must hear us, so he protects us, us and the forest. In four years, when the cocoa has matured, Imanzona and her husband will be able to live off their produce, until Arahania will continue to supplement their household revenue by going to work 60 kilometers from here. E as áreas que estão degradadas, a gente está tentando reflorestar também. 
We also tried to replant the places that had been destroyed, because she always used to say, plant cocoa. It will help you and will make everything grow again. Yes, this was her struggle, and today we carry it on with her. Today, we have a small group of women who are the fruit of her work. It's as if she planted a little seed and we now are reaping its fruits. It's a slow but sure harvest, and the name of this little group is Dorothy's Seeds, to honour her struggle and her work among us. We are the seeds that she left, and she grows a little more every day through us. In the early morning of February the 12th, 2005, Dorothy walked to a small camp of the PDS Esperanza. Two hired killers, contracted by a consortium of landowners, were waiting for her on the way. They asked her a question. Are you armed? She answered, I only have my Bible. She opened it and started to read the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. She was assassinated by six bullets fired at close range. Pouco tempo depois que a irmã foi morta, eu fui visitar o lugar. Shortly after her murder, I went to visit the place. It's something I'll never forget because I heard the silence of the forest. I looked at every tree near this place, from the smallest to the greatest. And I thought that these trees were the living witnesses of the death of this nun. For her too, the Amazon was a gift of God for all humanity. We can't use and abuse this forest that God created simply to make a profit for our own gain. The forest itself has great value. It is from this point of view that Dom Irwin wrote paragraphs 38 and 146 of the encyclical Laudato Si by Pope Francis. Today, the poor are rejected, superfluous. That is to say that the situation and the condition of the poor is worse than we can imagine. They don't count. They are rejected. We can throw them out. Do these superfluous people, these rejects, have a place in the church? Are they respected within the church? Do they find their support and their defense in the church? That is the question. It is important to continue Sister Dorothy's work, even if we don't measure up to her. 
She sent me to study at the seminary, which helped to train me. She was the first woman to accompany me during a pastoral internship. And for me, being here today in Anapu, where this friend shed her blood to give life, is everything for me. When we go to certain places to celebrate the Eucharist in the surrounding villages, rumors circulate that they will open fire and that bullets will be fired inside. But we celebrate the Eucharist anyway, and thanks be to God, so far, nobody has fired on us. I'm not afraid. I will be 49 on the 20th of January, the feast of the martyr Saint Sebastian, and what I want most is more life. But I find that it is necessary to give life in order to create life. I'm available. What do we mean by technological progress? Technology serves what purpose in the end? Weapons are the most sophisticated instruments that we can imagine in the world. In fact, we have the power to auto-destruct and to end the human race. This is not God's dream. The dream of Jesus is quite different. It is life. I have come so that you may have life and have it in all its fullness. And this is the Pope's intuition, that we can't separate our human life from circumstances. In other words, we live in a world that we ourselves are part of. Moreover, we do not dominate. We are human beings who have great responsibility because of the intelligence that God has given us to watch over and to take care of the garden that God has made for us all. From the Gospel according to John, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whosoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Let us pray with Pope Francis. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe, and in the smallest of creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we may protect life and beauty. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Praise be to you, amen. In 2008, Dorothy Stang received the United Nations Prize in the field of human rights. This honor has been awarded in the past to Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. Thank you.